So we need to spend a little time talking about intermolecular forces, and they are directly related to whether or not your molecule is polar or nonpolar. So that's why we spent all the time in the last day or so learning about polar and nonpolar molecules. So intermolecular forces are always forces of attraction, and this word inter means between molecules. So we're talking about attractions not within the molecule that's holding it together, not bonds, but just forces of attraction between one molecule for another. And this um, is responsible for things like boiling points and melting points. If you've got a lot of attraction, it takes a lot of energy to overcome those attractions, and so you have high boiling and melting points. But if you don't have much attraction to other molecules, then they can be separated very easily. And so those are the things that are gases at room temperature. So really there are three types, actually there are two types of intermolecular forces, but we have three names for them. So let's start with the first one. And this is a London dispersion force. It's also called a van der Waals attraction, but we'll usually use London dispersion force, and that's LDF for short. The things you need to know about that, they're present in all molecules, but they're only very important if things are nonpolar because they're very weak. And so what causes these attractions are temporary polarities. So if I have a molecule here, whatever it is, um, it's got all these electrons that are always moving around inside of it. But occasionally, for no particular reason, those electrons might get kind of bunched up on one side or another. So as we know, electrons are negative, and that's going to result in a slight negative charge on one side of the molecule. If one side is slightly negative, the other side is going to be slightly positive. We call this an instantaneous dipole. There's really no reason for it. They just happen, just random, um, random chance. And of course, once they get together, they repel each other. They're going to spread back out. But just for an instant, you've got that instantaneous dipole that's going to cause some attraction with anything that's next to it because what happens to this little guy that's next to it, this negative charge here is going to repel its electrons. So now this guy gets a little bit negative over here and a little bit positive on this side. So there's just a momentary attraction between the negative and positive. The opposite, of course, would happen on this side. Since this is a little bit positive, these electrons get attracted it gets a little bit negative here, a little bit positive here, and so it's sort of a cascade effect. We call these induced dipoles because they're caused when one of them gets bunched up, it affects the ones around it. Those attractions are going to come and go pretty quickly. Um, they don't stay around, but it's enough just to cause a little bit of attraction for these molecules. Now, another thing to, to note about this is that bigger molecules will have stronger attractions. And the reason for that is just because if you've got more electrons, you just have a bigger chance, a greater chance of them getting bunched up. So if I'm a molecule that just has a very few electrons, there's not much bunching up. But if I'm a molecule that has a lot of electrons, I just have a much higher chance of having um, a traffic jam. And so bigger molecules have stronger attractions. So London dispersion forces, they are in everything, but they really only matter in nonpolar things because they're fairly weak attractions. 
The other type of intermolecular force is a dipole-dipole force. And this happens with polar molecules. which have permanent dipoles. So here we said these are instantaneous and induced dipoles that come and go. But if you've got a polar molecule, and we talked about this a little bit in class, like HCl, we know that it's a polar bond and this molecule happens to be linear, so it's an easy one to, to look at. Chlorine pulls molecule, sorry, pulls electrons toward itself because it's the more electronegative. So it's going to be slightly positive on this side and slightly negative on this side. It's always that way. It's not something that comes and goes like with London dispersion forces. So again, if you have another HCl come along, it's going to be attracted, the chlorine side of another molecule is going to be attracted to the hydrogen side of, of this one because there's a little bit of a positive charge here, a little bit of a negative charge here. And there's just some attraction that exists between positive and negative, as you know. Of course, this one's going this way for your, for your dipole. And so, simple as that. You've got attraction between positive ends for negative ends. It's not as strong as a, as a chemical bond, otherwise they'd be stuck together all the time, but there's just a little bit of attraction there that makes them harder to to separate. So permanent dipoles, that one's not too, too bad to understand. Another name though that you're going to see, which is really in the same category here, is a hydrogen bond. And this is a bad name for this because it is not a chemical bond. It is an especially strong dipole-dipole force. So it's not anything different from something like this, but it's just stronger than your run-of-the-mill dipole, dipole force. The reason it's called hydrogen bonding is because it happens when hydrogen is bonded with fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. So these are very highly electronegative elements. And because they're so highly electronegative, they really pull hard on hydrogen's proton. Hydrogen only has that one little, sorry, pull hard on hydrogen's electron. Hydrogen only has that one little proton in the nucleus, so it can't pull back very hard. Your classic example of this is the water molecule. And of course, it has that bent shape. We're going to try to show that here. And oxygen's a big electronegative bully. It's going to pull hydrogen's electrons toward it. And so I've got all this negative charge that is flowing in that direction. And these little hydrogens down here end up with a slightly positive charge on that end of the molecule. But because there's such a huge imbalance, because they, the fight is so one-sided, um, another water molecule comes along and you just have a very strong attraction because you've got a big positive here and a fairly big negative here. So they're going to line up this way since this is the negative end of this molecule and this is the positive end of this one. Sometimes you see little dashed lines to show that attraction. But again, a hydrogen bond is no different than any other dipole-dipole force in, except that it is just stronger. And again, you're just looking for hydrogen bonded with F, O, or N. So what I'm asking you to do on your work for today, it's page 19 in your packet, is just look at some Lewis structures. And these are not necessarily the ones that you're going to see there, but things that we've done before, like carbon dioxide. If I look at that structure, 
I can see that that's a linear molecule, two electron domains, um, and they are polar bonds. Oxygen's pulling electrons toward themselves, but they cancel each other out. And so I would say this is a nonpolar molecule, and as such, it's only going to have London dispersion forces for its intermolecular forces. If it's something like um, sulfur dichloride, I'm going to draw that Lewis structure for this. This one happens to work out really nicely. Don't have to worry about double bonds or anything. And again, if I look at this shape in two dimensions, it looks kind of symmetrical. I have to think about the three-dimensional structure of this, which is going to be that bent shape. So I've got one end where the chlorines are, if this is the sulfur, one end where these unshared pairs are. So this is actually a polar molecule. Everything is not evenly spread around it. And so since it's a polar molecule, it does have LDF because everything has LDF, but I'm also going to say that it has dipole, dipole forces under that intermolecular forces um, column on the, on the worksheet. And one more, if I have ammonia, there is its structure. Um, it's going to be a trigonal pyramidal molecule. So hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. And then I've got this end here with the unshared pairs. So it's not evenly distributed. I've got this end that's different. So it's definitely a polar molecule. It still always has LDF. You can always put that down. But this one, because... I've got the hydrogen bonded with nitrogen. It's that especially strong dipole force. And so instead of just dipole, dipole, I'm going to call this one hydrogen bonding. And so on your homework assignment, you've got these molecules to draw. Again, this is page 19 in your packet. And you're going to fill out the table with the shape, the bond angles, which you've done before. Do you have polar bonds? Is it a polar molecule? And as you answer this question, that'll give you the types of intermolecular forces. London dispersion, dipole, dipole, or hydrogen bonding. Don't worry about the hybridization category yet. We will work on that on Monday. So that's what you need to know to get um, to work on your, on your homework. And if you have a good day, I'll see you later.